Hello people of this channel, I'm going to tell you how to make a video game with this very s simple two part tutorial. So make sure you have the Unity Hub installed, get it from unity3d.com, or maybe it's .org, I can't remember. Go to new project, we're going to be creating a 3D game for this. We're not going to go over coding, we're going to use an asset called Bolt, but we'll just choose 3D, we'll call this tutorial game I mean it doesn't really matter what you call it because you can change the project name let me just create a different directory for this in development folder tutorial we'll choose that folder and we can click create and then we just have to wait for unity to load So this is what you should see when you start up a new Unity project. You should just go to the layout, default layout, that will do this. So this is the default layout. And before we start, we're going to import a few assets just to make our life a lot easier. We'll go to the package manager. We'll type in pro. Pro Builder. Install. That should install a Pro Builder. And we just have to wait for it to install. Pro Builder is a very handy tool to make levels with, which we're going to be using a lot of. I do recommend creating files for like all your assets until like you have a lot of assets. So I'm just, just importing right now, and I hope you enjoyed that new intro. It took me a little bit to figure out how to make that. So it's just important. Import it into the project. Yep, it did. And go under Tools, Pro Builder, Pro Builder window, and just dock that wherever you want to. I recommend docking it right next to the inspector like that. The inspector is probably the window you're going to be spending a lot of time in. Just because like every asset has something that needs to be inspected somehow. Like over here, this is the inspection for the light. And we can change the type of light. We can do point light. I've never really used that, so we're just going to keep it at directional, which is like a sign. And then another asset we're going to import is bolt. It is a free package for visual scripting. It's called, I've already downloaded it before. It's free. And we can just do import. Just import all, like so. It may, you may get an error, but that's really nothing. It's just because it's kind of like an old package. Then we can go under tools, install bolt, import, and then you can import all this junk. Bolt is a very handy tool, like if you're more into art styles and don't really like programming, then you should use bolt. But I think in this tutorial we're only going to use bolt. I mean, I'll maybe do a little bit of scripting here and there, but... It's probably the good majority of bolt. So we just have to wait for this to import. Okay, so once you've gone through that bolt import wizard, you can either choose between the human naming or the programmer naming. For this, I'm going to be using the human naming, but you can change these things at any time if you want to change. I've never used human naming before, so this is probably going to be new for me too and then we can just generate and wait for that. Okay, so you, after you've gone through that, you can just click this little close button and then we can just leave that install bolt where it is right now and then we can go to window graph. Just drag this to wherever you want to. I'm going to replace the S asset store tab and I'm going to place the variables down here where the console and everything is. So the first thing that we're going to want to do 
do not delete the same variables. Just don't. Please, don't. So we're just going to center out of the camera position. And then we will move it to the side over here. Like so. Let's just center this. It drives me crazy when it's not centered like that. And then we can do a rotation of like 45 or so. And then we can make, we can just drag this slide off to the sides. Not really. Okay, let, let's just like, this is going to drive me insane, so I'm going to have to center this. Okay, let's, I like zeroing out the rotation and rotating it so it fits my needs. Let's just make that top down. And then we can go over to the Pro Builder window, new shape. We can just zero out the position on everything. We can build it. And then we can apply some scale to it. If you would like to see what is like going on, like what the game looks like, just go over to your game tab and drag that to wherever you want it to be. I'm just going to drag it onto my second monitor. So I can actually see how this looks. Okay, and it still needs something. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that's what it needed. Uh, <laughs> um, let's just do 42 by 42. I recommend doing center pivot. So it does it the correct way you want it to. And the camera should be. So we can just drag it back to the center grid. Uh, in order to snap something to the grid, which I believe is two grid size increments, and you just hold down control, and that should snap it to the grid. So over here in the game view, we have this. I recommend using a resolution 1920 by 1080p or 1280 by 720p because that's what a lot of resolutions are in. So they look the exact same, which is good. Okay, so we have our camera. I'm going to import a image and we're going to use that as a material it's in my textures folder, fill in texture. We can just drag that and drop it there. Near the fill in texture tab, we can do 42 by 43. 42 by 43. There we go. Now we have it tiled. Like so. That doesn't actually look half bad. Here it is. This is what it looks like in game view. But we have a prototype texture. And then we can add in the player. In order to do that, we just go over here. Let's actually name this cube 4. You can just press F2 to rename something. And we can name this 4. And then we can go under here, 3D object. Let's use a sphere. Then I can center everything out on here. And then just drag it up a little bit. see what the game tab looks like. Okay, so we have our sphere. I'm actually going to keep the game view in the second window. Okay, so we have our sphere. I'm going to make a separate material for this. We can go create material. And then we can just name this player. And then we can, let's make it green. You can change the RGB values here. So the player is going to be green. <laughs> but if we try to play the game, it will do absolutely nothing because we don't have any controls set up. So we're going to have to set up some controls. But in order to do that, we're going to add a rigid body component. 
so let's go into our scene view and then we can click on our little circle here and then we can type in rigid body and that will add rigid body to that and then we can create what is called a flow machine a flow machine is basically it's a script but it's a visual script so you don't actually like have to make the code you can just make it out nodes so we can add a flow machine we can create new we can just name this player movement save and then we can just double click on that in the flow graph to ed start editing it you will get an error but just ignore it and then we can delete the start and update event because we won't have to need it then we can go under the events input on keyboard input we can change the key to w let's find that it for some reason it doesn't support scroll so i'm just going to have to do it this way we can we can find our w key like so action down and then we can type in rigid body and then we can find the one that says add force xyz self okay because it's on the player and the values we want to add is one on the z so we just go under here and type in one on the z well let's actually type in five and then once we play our game let me just move the game window over here so you you guys can see it okay so and if we yeah you can see the ball moving it moves it just incredibly slowly and as you can see here there's no friction on the floor so in order to fix it we just do create where's physics material you want, you're looking for something that says physics material here it is we can call this floor friction friction like so we can just set these values to like one and one and then we can just drag it onto here and it should have applied it hmm. don't know if it applied it or not I believe it did but there really isn't a good way to Okay, now I think it applied it. So that means it probably shouldn't do the. It probably shouldn't slip. Which is good. Yeah, it still moves a little bit, but. We can go back to our flow graph. We can just copy this. But instead of Z, we can type in negative 5. And we can choose the S key because we're doing W A S D. Let's find the S key. Okay, so now if we play our game, we should see that if we press the W key, we move up, and if we press the S key, we move down. I'm going so, but we can't move side to side yet which is pretty important in the game but I think we need more speed so let's just type in 15 in here and let's see how fast he moves now I'm sorry if you experience any frame rate drops through here it's just trying to like compile everything I did it's because the game is paused yeah, the, the player should move a lot faster which he does, okay. And if you really want to, you can hook up all these default lid rules, or you could add, subtract, multiply, or divide, and returns the quotient of the two scholars. Uh, returns the sum of two blue, blue input. 
No, I don't want to. We can just clear this error message. So we have a basic movement set up and we can just do this so it's side to side. So I'm going to turn off my microphone and do this in a time lapse. Okay, so we can just check to see if the player is moving in the correct direction by playtesting the game and he does move in the right direction I'm pressing A on my keyboard and he's moving left and we can also move him right if we press D he's still kind of slippery though because it's like they're trying to figure out a way to fix that off camera but we know our player movements working so we can maybe add an obstacle. We can just name this player. And then we can type in new shape, transform. And then we can move that to where we want to using the move tool. Hold on. It's being really stupid. Why am I not getting the option to move? Let me just put that real quickly. Okay, so we should now get the option to build it. But I still can't move it for some reason. Why can't I move it? Let's just say this position to two, like so. Oh, uh, it's because I'm in face edit mode. Don't make that mistake. Do not go into face edit mode. Okay, so now the player has something to ram into, but nothing will happen if he rams into it. So, let's actually create a separate one for this. So, we can now go under here and choose under this materials folder. We can just duplicate that one. And we can rename this to fill in texture obstacle like so, and we can rename this to fill in texture, texture for, like so. And then the obstacle one will be tiled a lot less, so it won't have this crazy tile to it, like so. So now it doesn't have this crazy tile to it, but since the Y is facing down, we can just name this obstacle. But since the Y is facing down, there's no Y coming on to it from the side, so we're going to just have to rotate that like so. Your scene may become a little darker, but you can just change the intensity of the light. Five is too bright. And two. Change it back to one, or we can just change the color to white and two. No, we're just gonna stick with one. Okay, so now Y is hitting the cube. So it actually it looks like a cube now. It no longer looks like a black blob. But the if we plus press play, nothing will happen to the sphere because the cube isn't scripted to do anything to the sphere. So if we just play the game and hit the cube, nothing will happen, but you can still play the game. So we want to set it up to where if we hit the cube, 
it will restart the game. So we can just add a tag to it. This will come in later down the line. You can just give it tag optical. Like so. We can actually create an empty. Just center of the location. We can name this obstacle manager. And then we can just drag this obstacle under there. So now we can just close this up like so. And under the flow graph, we can make a player manager. So we can actually make one called scripts now. So let's move that under there. Too bad you can't. Uh, we can. No, no, we're not. Okay, so we can create a new flow machine and call it game restart obstacle. Or restart game. Like so. We can edit the graph. Nothing will be in the graph because it's not assigned to an object, so we can just do on collision on collision enter and then we can just find object with tag with tag tag and we just name that obstacle like so and then once that happens, we can use the scene manager. Load scene, scene build index. And you uh, need smart enough to know that since the build index is zero, we only have one scene in the game, so it won't load any scene and you won't get any errors. And I forgot to apply the script. <laughs> so we're going to have to exit out that again. And we can just apply this flow machine. In order to apply something to an object, you just drag it and drop it or add the component. And we can just drag and drop it on there. Drag and drop. No, I guess we can't drag and drop. Oh, we have to create a new flow machine. I forgot about that. And then we can just drag this restart game onto there, like so. And then once we hit the obstacle, it should restart the game, hopefully. So we just have to hit it. Nope, it didn't do anything. Hmm. Does it not have a tag obstacle to it? Restart game obstacle. Maybe I misspelled it. It doesn't have the tag to it, seriously. <laughs> Silly me. Okay, so now once we come in contact with it, it should restart the scene. So we can just duplicate that cube. Let's actually make it a prefab. A prefab is an object across all the scenes, so prefab. And we can just drag and drop that cube into the prefabs folder. And now we have a prefab cube. Don't unpack the prefab until you're done developing the game. Like, only unpack the prefab once you know that your game's developed. That really helps out in the long run. Let's drag my game tab up there. Okay, so now it should. If we come in contact with either or, it should restart the game, hopefully. So, let's drag my game. No, it's a terrible place for the game folder. Okay, so if we come in contact with this one, it restarts the game. And if we come in contact with this one, it restarts the game. So I'm going to work on an image off camera to apply to those cubes. And we can just drag and drop the obstacle under there. So, and you can actually edit prefabs if you click this little arrow next to them. We can edit this all if we want, but we're not going to yet. 
and this video is actually 26 minutes long so far but we're going to add an in trigger so we just do new shape my shape tool got really stupid there for some reason it's actually coming over into the next monitor <laughs> that's funny zero okay like so and then we can just name this end trigger and we can scale that a little bit I prefer using the built-in scale tools instead of this thing down here and we can just click this little build icon and then it should have built it and then we can we can try to recenter this a little bit so it takes up only that area down there huh. what's the spacing between these what uh, does it say uh, so the real location on the z-axis is 11 and a 0 apparently so I guess it should be 11 long Oh, that's a little big. But we can just work with it. You can go under the mesh collider, set to convex is trigger, and we can do on. Hold on. Let's create a new script. Flow machine. Where's the flow machine? Oh, here it is. Flow machine. We can name this end trigger script. We can do edit graph and then we can do on trigger enter. On trigger enter. And then we can do scene manager. Load scene build index. And then we can do an add and the A value will be 0 and the B value will be 1 so it will add another scene to it and we can just yeah uh, so let's just actually create a new scene real quickly in order to create a new scene let's rename this scene I recommend creating a scene folder so we can do prototype level type level one level one and then we can wait for it to save it takes a little bit to save and then we can just go under the scenes tab scenes tab we can duplicate it we'll go under build settings add open scene and add the scene to prototype level 2 and then we can play the game and if we come in contact with that trigger it should take us to the next level hopefully uh, so we just have to come in contact with the trigger it didn't take us to the next scene why didn't it take us to the next scene we're supposed to take us to the next scene. Oh, it's because I didn't apply it. You always have to remember to apply scripts. Okay, now if we come in contact with it, it should take us to the next level, hopefully. Okay, it took us to the next level, and so in our restart game script, we can actually go under the flow graph, and it's scene build index, we can just set this, I wonder if you can set to self. Huh. Add. Let's just add zero. And this one will be float visual. Okay, 
So now I'm almost sure that it can work like that. We can actually delete this scene too because we're not using it right now. I recommend to save often because you never know when your Unity can crash. So we've set up a basic movement script. We've set up a on collision enter script for obstacles. We've set up in triggers and we've applied materials to all the objects except for the in trigger. And I hope you found this tutorial informative. Please subscribe if you did. This will be a three part series going over how to use Unity, Bolt, and make a game like I'm making. Anyways, fun new out.